Hello, my name is Ryan Dodson. This video is for my Information and Computer Security Class 382-50, Computer Security. My professor is Colleen Faisal. A little disclaimer first, I am just a student and this is an educational video for my class. This video is about e-commerce and it's about how consumers and businesses conduct payment through the electronic transferring of funds. E-commerce sales have been growing ever since the internet was opened to commercial use in 1991. Thousands of websites flooded the internet because the customer demand was so high. With all that money and data flowing through the internet, there is an inherent need for consumers and businesses to protect it. I will be discussing the security measures we take to protect our money and data. If you are new to computer security or the internet, then this video is for you. I am not going to get into any sort of gritty details, so you server jockeys may want to skip this one. First, I want to go over some security basics. Basically, the foundation of our secure internet transaction takes place today. You all know, or may not know, that there are protocols which are used on the internet to ensure secure transactions. Familiar to you may be SSL, or the secure socket layer. For those who don't know about it, the secure socket layer is a very important part of internet security. It is a security protocol which dictates the variables for encryption algorithms. SSL is the link between your web browser and a web server where content is stored. Everything from your password to credit card number can be encrypted and safely transferred to the server using this protocol. HTTPS is the Secure Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is a combination of SSL and HTTP. <laughs> By the way, HTTP is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and this is the node-based universal markup language. It is the basis of data, commu data communication on the World Wide Web. When combining HTTP and SSL, all of the data over the internet website is securely transferred. These protocols both meet security standards that we seek to have, namely authenticity, encryption, integrity, and non-reputability. Authenticity is when a user is asked for identification information, say your name and birth date. Encryption is the securing of data into something we call ciphertext. Integrity refers to the data not being altered during transmission. We don't want anyone altering or hacking into the data, especially thieves. And non-reputability is a protection against denial of order or denial of payment. This ensures that data is correctly transmitted. <laughs> Both of these security protocols are used when it comes to the next topic I'm about to talk about, which is the electronic transferring of funds aka your money. What you may not be familiar with is the current standard of secure electronic payments through your credit card. If you can all play along, take out your wallet and get out your credit card. Flip it over to its backside. There will be a three or four digit code on your card called your CVV. This is the card verification value. For all you American Express people, the code will be on the front of your card for some odd reason. It doesn't seem very safe to me. Have you ever bought something online with your credit card and they asked you for this code? Have you ever wondered why it was necessary? I'm going to try and explain it to you. This code is a crucial addition to our current standard of securing electronic payments called 3D Secure. The CVV is an additional step needed for consumers to verify that they have the credit card in hand and are not thieves. 
Now, more on 3D Secure. It goes by many names, aka Verified by Visa, MasterCard. Alright, uh, again, before I go into 3D Secure, I just want to explain how a non 3D Secure credit card transaction takes place. Alright, so pretty much there's the normal way is a it's a two domain system. Um, pretty much you enter your card into the merchant plug on the website you're buying from, right? Whatever. You just enter your card into that website and that merchant then communicates that information to their bank where the money's going to. They verify that information, send it back to the website, and if all is well, if you had money in your account, whatever, blah, 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 you made your payment. There's no real layer of security besides the website that you put your information in. Um, you the liability is pretty much on you if you're using this form of credit card <laughs> credit card in hand and are not thieves <clears throat> now more on 3d secure it goes by many names aka verified by visa mastercard secure code or amex safe key but they are all the same they take into account another party that traditional secure electronic transactions do not, which is the issuing bank of your credit card. 3D Secure stands for 3 Domain Server. <clears throat> Three separate parties or domains are needed to make this possible. Your credit card CVV, which I just explained, is a vital piece of data verified across all three domains to secure your transaction. The first domain is the company you are purchasing something from and the bank that merchant uses. We will call this the acquirer domain. <clears throat> the second domain is the issuer domain. This is comprised of the cardholder, which is you, and the issuing bank of your card, the third domain is how the issuer and acquirer domains interact. It is called interoperability domain. I know, it's a mouthful. I can barely say it. <laughs> this do domain contains all the connecting services, if you will. These are the directory services and the ACS, or access control servers, and MPIs, or merchant plugins. The access control server is how the issuing bank and payment service interact, and the merchant plugins are how these services are integrated into a website. <clears throat> now, I'm going to try to explain to you the process of how these three domains interact when you try to make a purchase online. <clears throat> Before I go through this process, I want to explain two terms that are very similar but mean different things, especially in the context of e-transactions. The first term is authorization. Authorization is the act of an issuing bank from the issuer domain, remember, verifying the validity of card details provided to them and consenting to the charge based on their internal rules. These internal rules are things like if you have sufficient funds in your account. The second term is authentication. Authentication is when a cardholder uses some form of confirmation to authenticate that is indeed them performing this transaction. <clears throat> okay, now let's get back to the process of 3D Secure. <clears throat> let's set up a demonstration and display it on a flowchart so you can easily understand what's going on here. Alright, this first little box is you, the cardholder. Let's pretend you're going to buy something from a website. How about Etsy? For all you artistic people out there that know what Etsy is. Uh, pretend you're about to buy something. Say this. 
All right, as all of you may know or not know, pay, uh, PayPal is the main way of paying on Etsy. So let's say we have PayPal, which is an online payment service, for those of you who don't know, but should. It's pretty popular. It's pretty easy to pay for our stuff. Um, Y'all know that PayPal takes your credit card information from us when we sign up. This is basically the first step in our payment process. <clears throat> and then PayPal will take that and ask the directory server if our credit card is enrolled in 3D Secure. Just step two. Next, the directory server will respond, telling PayPal that is that we are indeed registered. Next, PayPal will redirect us to a 3D Secure page. This will ask us for our CVV code to authenticate us. Normally, this will be like some sort of pop-up, and this can have um, vulnerability issues, which we'll talk about later. But um, once that's done, um, the result will be sent back to PayPal. That's step six. <clears throat> All right. Then uh, PayPal will submit the card identification and 3D secure verification to the acquiring bank. Notice here how there's two two domains going to one domain. There's a secure transfer of information by using three parties. If all the parties are signed up in 3D secure, you're going to be shifting liability away from you. All right. Um, all right. Anyways, more on that later. Sorry. Um, all right. Uh, all right. Next. After PayPal has submitted those two types of verification to the bank, the acquiring bank will then authorize the transaction by communicating with the credit card network and the issuing bank, your bank. All right. And if that all goes well, the final confirmation of your payment results will be fed back up the chain to you, which is the final step. This is the basis of a 3D secure payment today. All right. Um, now, obviously, the benefits are obvious. You know, <laughs> you need to have your card to prove it's you. Without being able to sign in and prove that it's you some way, whether it be like password or PIN code, whatever, through PayPal, you need to um, use that CBV number. So this will this is basically an extra step to deter theft. So essentially it'll ship fraud liability away from you and onto your card uh, issuing bank. But 3D Secure is also a huge benefit to any enterprise on the internet. If all the appropriate parties are enrolled in 3D Secure, then it will be able to ship fraud liability away from them as well and onto the issuing bank. This protects merchants. This is really important. A lot of businesses use this now. Um, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are some vulnerabilities in this system, as there are in any. Nothing's 100% secure. <clears throat> Since there's a, like a pop-up window that asks for your password, like when you go through PayPal, this iframe can be copied by uh, phishing attackers. You know, they'll they'll have a pop-up that looks exactly like that and you think you're signing in to your account and you may not be. You may be entering your credit card, secret information, whatever, into some phishing website. But, you know, there's that risk anywhere. You know, some people say that signing up for 3D Secure online at the time of purchase, which is uh, an option, is uh, more of a risk than it's worth, but um, really it's um, 
it's, there's more benefits than there are downside, I think, to this, and uh, that's why it's a big commercial standard now used by multiple major credit card companies. Um, but you know, you, you got to always make sure there's no signs of illegitimacy on the website that you may be entering your sensitive information into. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed my little video on the e-commerce and electronic transferring of funds in 3D Secure. <laughs> I hope you know a little bit more now.